Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a wonderful week and is looking forward to a fantastic weekend. In this class, we are looking at IELTS writing task two and we are completing a band nine essay welcome Jineel. This is a members chat class. Everybody of course is welcome to watch. To become a member of our channel, simply click the join button next to the subscribe button. If you don't see that button and if you have questions about IELTS or our products, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I will help you further. In this class, everyone, we are again looking at IELTS writing task two to complete a band nine essay. And we, while we wait for some more of our members to join in, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success and help with academic writing. Check us out there for the general IELTS. Visit us at g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. That's general IELTS help dot com on both of those websites we have lots and lots of information to help you improve your communication and your english for your next ielts exam hi mohit hi atharwa hi patel hi bakrat good to see all of you uh, this is our academic ielts website here at aehelp.com simply click this big red button to join our premium package it's a one-time payment for lifetime access and certainly there's lots of help there for you. Uh, General IELTS looks like this. It's the same layout, green background. Click this big red button to join us there. We are an official British Council IELTS Test Registration Center and certified agents, so you are in excellent hands with us. Good morning. June in Alberta, our neighboring province. Good to have you in the class. So again, everyone, uh, this Sunday, day after tomorrow, we are premiering uh, My IELTS Band 9 Journey Episode 4. That's right, I took the IELTS exam in Budapest, Hungary um, at the start of this year and we filmed that and we are bringing that to you as a five-part series. Uh, this Sunday will be my test results. So if you're curious what I got on my IELTS exam, check that out on Sunday. Hi, Rashika. If you'd like to get our apps, get our apps from your Google Play, Apple App Store, Academic IELTS Help, and General IELTS Help. Link the apps to the websites. Hi, Harwinder. Good to have more students joining in as we get going here. So... We've got this task two class. We've got listening section part three, part four for everybody after where everybody can join the chat. And then members, uh, tomorrow we will have a question and answer session. So uh, make sure to get your IELTS questions ready for tomorrow. And we'll do a speaking part two. All right, just a quick review. Yesterday we started this task two writing essay. Uh, we spent the class on planning, getting some good ideas, coming up with a good thesis statement. This was the question. Task to writing. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Some people think that governments should give financial support to creative artists such as painters and musicians. Others believe that artists should be funded by alternative sources. Discuss both views and give your own opinion. And now we discussed this and one really important tip I gave you yesterday was to think about the real world. So how does it work in the real world? Artists, musicians, um, painters, are they supported by the government? Are they supported by private organizations or individuals? Or are they supported by both? And then, of course, after a bit of thinking, we realize that, yeah, both governments and individuals support artists such as painters and musicians. So um, why is that? What's the logic? We came up with some great ideas. 
And then uh, we came up with our thesis uh, statement. So this was my original thesis statement from yesterday. Uh, welcome, Chabi Khalil. Good to have you back in our group of members. Um, I believe that both the government and private sector should support artists such as musicians and painters as they both benefit the former through culture and the latter through profit. So we basically said that while well, governments, when they support painters um, and uh, artists, they build the culture of society, right? Because art is a key element of creating culture, preserving history and culture. And then, um, of course, uh, with private organizations and individuals, they profit from supporting such individuals um, through potential business, through marketing, brand recognition, and so forth. Okay, so uh, the homework was to write your introductory paragraph, okay? And the introductory paragraph according to standard English literature, okay, not according to me, not according to some other IELTS teacher or uh, such, but according to standard English literature, it is made up of a hook. A hook is a statement that catches your reader's attention. It has a background, so it introduces the definition of what you're discussing and the importance of it. So why is it important? What's the logic there? And then the thesis, your argument, that is an introduction, okay? It's not just paraphrase the question, okay? Uh, paraphrasing the question is a really basic type of background where you define um, the question or the, the topic. That's why some IELTS classes or teachers say, oh, for the introduction, just paraphrase the question and then say, this essay will discuss. That's a very, very basic type of background and um, thesis. Consider grade nine, grade 10 um, level uh, introduction in an English speaking country school system. But of course, to get that high band, so to get band eight, band nine, you need at least a grade 12 college level introduction. So you have to be a little bit more um, uh, detailed. You have to be a little bit more clever. This is my introduction here, okay? And I'm going to read mine, but also uh, members, those of you who did your homework, uh, please put the hook, the background, um, and the thesis, so your introduction into uh, the chat. I would love to read some of your introductory uh, paragraphs and paragraph elements, and then I'll give you feedback uh, on what you've done well and maybe what you need to improve on, okay? All right, um, so I'll read mine, and then I see June, you have yours up there, which is great. I'll look at that in just a moment. So here's mine. Uh, sponsoring aspiring artists is an age-old practice. That's my hook. Look how simple it is. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words, okay? Um, here I'm basically telling my reader that giving money to help artists is something society and people have done for arguably hundreds and hundreds of years, if not thousands. So sponsoring aspiring artists is an age-old practice. We've been doing this for a long time, okay? And then here's my background. By providing an allowance for living, study, and presentation, Musicians and painters can dedicate their time and energy to mastering their art. So this is um, my uh, background and importance all in one sentence, okay? So I'm basically saying giving money for these purposes lets these individuals express their talents at a high level. Okay, now I adjusted my thesis a little bit so that it's sensible. I believe that both the government and private sector should support such artists as societies and organizations benefit greatly from art expression, the former through culture and the latter through profit. Okay. So here's my full paragraph together. And notice that it's not very long. 
Okay, so it's nice and short, this introduction, but it's very much to the point, okay? So sponsoring aspiring artists is an age-old practice. By providing an allowance for living, study, and presentation, musicians and painters can dedicate their time and energy to mastering their art. I believe that both the government and private sector should support such artists as societies and organizations benefit greatly from art expression, the former through culture and the latter through profit. All right, so uh, that's my introductory paragraph, um, and we're going to use this to now create the rest of the essay, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and the conclusion. Uh, let's take a look at what some of our members have done. Okay, so um, June writes, for thousands of years, artists have played a vital role in driving cultural revolutions and economic developments. Background, most times it is difficult for creative artists such as calligraphers, painters, composers, and pianists to make a fortune at the beginning of their career. However, they need funding uh, for not only leading their lives, but also displaying their artwork in different ways. Okay, uh, June, really nice, very detailed. Uh, instead of however, uh, June, it should be therefore, because you're not actually expressing opposition, you're expressing cause and effect, okay? So um, think about it this way, June. Uh, because painters, composers, pianists have difficulty uh, making money at the beginning of their career, they need support. So it's a because, it's not a nevertheless or however, okay? You have to be careful with those uh, connective words. If you have the wrong type, in this case you do, that does kind of create coherence mistakes or problems, so it will hurt your mark, okay? In my opinion, both national authorities and private corporations ought to provide monetary assistance to artists because of the significant contributions of their creativity, enriching culture for society, and increasing profits for companies. Very nice, okay? So nice thesis statement. Yeah. Okay, Nick Hill says, financial assistance for artists these days plays an important role for their survival. Good, I like it, Nick Hill. Yeah, I can see that. Background, uh, the experts in art, such as painters and musicians, need monetary support to cover their living expenses as well, as well as other necessities so that they can invest their time and energy for expressing their great talent. Very good. Certain individuals ascertain that national authorities ought to be financing them. Opponents, however, think that they should be supported by other organizations. In my opinion, authorities and private organizations ought to be supporting creative artists that benefit both government by creating culture and private sectors by promoting their products. Very good, Nick Hill. So Nick Hill, you have really good writing there. I think you have very nice grammatical structure. This is both to June and Nick Hill. One element you want to really start working on now that you have the right ideas and the right expression is to be concise, okay? So once you reach a good level of writing in English, meaning that you have good vocabulary, good grammar, um, and you're basically up at that high band seven, band eight level in the IELTS, uh, what you want to do is you want to start mastering what's called concise writing or concise expression, okay? So this is an important tip for the upper intermediate students who are looking to improve their writing further. Okay, so once you have mastered good vocabulary uh, information, structure, and grammar, you want to work hard on uh, creating concise writing, meaning you want to state your ideas in as short and simple way as possible, 
without omitting um, important information or losing literary style. And that's challenging, okay? That's kind of like the final stage of an author's uh, development. And this is something that even the greatest authors work on uh, till their very last breath, is to be able to express their thoughts in short ways that don't lose the feeling of their expression um, so they retain the quality of their writing, but they can be even faster and more impactful for a greater audience. So that's what you want to work on, okay? Um, when I wrote my uh, introductory paragraph yesterday, at first it was quite long, okay? And then I reviewed it a couple of times so that I was able to basically shorten it up and make it more concise. So I'm working on this skill all the time also, okay? All right, Syed, welcome to our group of members. Send me an email when you get the chance, okay? All right, uh, Rashika, financial support plays a major role in the emergence of fine artists. Rashika, that is a beautiful hook. I love the use of um, that phrase, emergence of fine artists. It is necessary to uh, monetarily assist artists to create confidence in their work by allowing them to concentrate on improving their talents instead of wasting time and energy to make money for daily needs. Okay, Rashika, that's a good start. I made a few grammatical corrections there. Hi, Kartini. Harwinder says, monetary assistance is a necessary part for the growth of an artist's career. Certain people think that governments should be the one to aid them um, in finance. However, I believe that both the government and private sector can make contributions to support uh, artists, such as musicians and painters, so that they can best benefit from uh, entities. Harwinder, not bad. You want to have a direct thesis, okay? Students in the IELTS, it's definitely better to have a direct thesis than a non-direct thesis. They tend to always score higher, okay? All right, um, so now let's get into writing our body paragraphs. So body paragraph... Okay. And specifically here, body paragraph one, of course, is made up of a few components. So the first is the topic sentence. And the topic sentence is simply a deeper definition of your uh, first key point from your thesis. Okay. So in this case, um, basically... I state that, okay, I'm going to discuss both sides, and I agree that both sides, or I believe that both sides, both governments and private sectors should support artists. And why? The reason why for, is because, first of all, governments benefit um, from artists through building the culture and history of society, okay? Now, history is a part of culture, of course. That's why I didn't... Um, go into that detail in the thesis. So what I want to do is I want to write a topic sentence that basically tells my reader in some other way that, hey, governments should be responsible for funding artists' growth and development and careers because it's beneficial to them, okay? So let's put that into a topic sentence. Let's think about a way to express that again to our reader so that we emphasize it and also give our reader another chance to kind of understand that in a clearer way from my perspective. So from the perspective of the author. Okay. All right. So let's do that. Write a topic sentence. I'll do the same and then we'll move on to the other elements of uh, the um, body paragraph. Okay. All right, so
All right. Um, there is my topic sentence, which I feel is a bit of a deeper definition of what I mean by uh, culture being driven by artists or being created by artists and therefore it's society's responsibility to support uh, such art, okay? Um, so here, instead of saying government, I basically say societies. Why? Because, well, logically, governments represent society. Government is the controlling element of society, right? Um, so most societies define... Uh, at first I wrote attribute, and then I realized that it's better to use the word define. It's a more accurate term here. So most societies define their culture through their music, dance, paintings, and literature, which are created by artists through the centuries. And therefore, it is the responsibility of society to give support for such creativity. Okay. Now, I'm not just suddenly making this up, and this is where sometimes viewers are like, well, Adrian, but how do you come up with that so quickly or in the 40 minutes uh, during um, that intense pressure of the IELTS exam? Uh, simple answer, planning, right? So when we did our planning yesterday, we talked about this and we visualized this, right? So the importance of art, music, uh, paintings from the perspective of the government, okay? Uh, Bakrat writes, the supplies of monetary fund assists to pay um, mortgage, show activities and better life so they can invest their time to perform their work towards art. Uh, Bakrat, I think that's still part of your introduction, right? Now, Bakrat, a very important point. Uh, don't use the word will, okay? Uh, avoid using the word will in your writing. Usually, especially in academic writing, the tense is more present tense because we want our message to be true, generally speaking. So as you know from your grammar studies, when you use the present tense, it shows a general truth. Um, when you use will, it means something in the future that is not now, okay? So ideally, in a perfect situation, your argument is not just for the future, but it's true now, it's true in the past, it's true in the future. So we use the present tense, which is a general truth. Does that make sense, students? That's a very important point, and a lot of um, IELTS candidates make this mistake of using the future tense, okay? So let me make that note for you really quickly. Okay, so I'm going to say important here. Okay, and in university, um, this will definitely uh, be emphasized by your teachers. So in writing, especially academic and professional writing, okay, you should focus on using the uh, present tense as it uh, gives a general truth which applies to the past, present, and future, okay? So avoid using the future participle will as this means that your argument applies to the future, but not so much the present. Okay, and that's why we avoid it because uh, people often um, don't care about the future or don't care about the past as much. So they'll be like, oh, it will happen. Oh, who cares then? So if we keep using um, fossil fuels the same way that we have been for the last 150 years, the environment will suffer. Um, oh, okay, who cares? Let's just keep driving our cars. Uh, no, um, fossil fuels are damaging the environment. The environment is suffering from the last 150 years of fossil. Oh goodness, it's suffering now. The planet's dying. I got to stop. Okay. Uh, humans uh, often do not react to, um, 
the pressures of the future. They react to the pressures of the present. Okay, it's in our nature, unfortunately. Um, all right. So uh, June. Uh, Rashika, some nice topic sentences there. I'm going on to the explanation so that we can move along in the essay. I will read more um, sentences that you're presenting. I'm just moving along here. Uh, so do keep writing. Okay. Uh, after the topic sentence comes the explanation. All right. The explanation is going into more detail about um, the question and going into quantitative, uh, visible, measurable ideas that make it easier for your reader to understand and agree with your argument, okay? So think real world uh, explanations or definitions. Uh, think quantitative information. Okay, so this is where your reader kind of says, okay, I got you, but what do you mean by that? Like, what do you mean um, that it's society's responsibility uh, to give support uh, for artists? Okay, so how does that work? Okay, um, let's define that more, all right? Okay. Uh, well, let me do that, and then um, you do the same, and we'll compare, all right? So, All right, um, so there's my explanation. Again, this is where you can spend more and more time, make it better and better. Uh, use your planning, okay? So here's what I, what I wrote. So since it is difficult for artists to make money directly through their efforts, taxpayers should dedicate a certain amount of budget, okay? And here, if I want to reiterate um, the topic word, I can say government, budget, to make sure that artists can capture the pop culture, historical events, and language of their society. Pop culture means popular culture of their society, or even of their society, if I'm rereading this, of their era. Okay, so in the time that they live, in their visual and auditory recordings and reflections. Okay. So basically meaning their paintings and their music in this case. So I'm just paraphrasing uh, further, all right? Okay, uh, let's see what some of you have. So uh, Jainil writes, uh, by national authorities supporting artists to create a society that provides more culture and values through fine art. Okay, Bakrat writes, the numerous cultural activities as music, paintings, and sculptures build an artist to society. Therefore, it is the responsibility of associations to reinforce for such work. Bakrat, um, you have some problems with grammar and word choice, so you need to rethink that, okay? Uh, it reads like you're translating from your own language, and that's not good. You don't want to be directly translating. Nick Hill writes, the creativity of experts in art such as paintings, music, and various sculptures defines the importance of society. 
Therefore, governments, are res uh, governments should be responsible for assisting the creation of aesthetics or aesthetic arts. Nikhil, it sounds like you're kind of repeating your introduction a little bit here. Okay. Uh, Harwinder writes, as societies are descendants of that culture, it is important to preserve it by aiding artists who capture society's history through paintings and music. So Harwinder, I think that's a good start. Uh, importantly, you need to finish that idea. That's one of the very common mistakes that I see in students' writing is they don't finish their ideas in their writing. Okay. All right, now uh, comes um, an example. All right, now think of a real world example, okay? So um, think of uh, some examples where governments support artists, musicians, painters, um, in order to preserve and build culture in society. Uh, I'd like you to think of one before I write some up here for uh, my body paragraph. Um, what are some examples? So where can we see in society? And here, are, this is where I'm encouraging you to have that critical thinking because this kind of example, so thinking of this idea helps you to boost your uh, essay and your band score, of course. Um, so where in society do we see governments uh, assisting artists and musicians to express the culture um, of society, the history of society? So where do we see that? Okay. Where do you see government support? I know in Canada, in Hungary, in some European countries that I visited in Japan, where I visited before some Asian countries, um, I have some really clear ideas of where I've seen governments uh, support artists. Uh, let's see if uh, you come up with some of those same ideas. So where, where can we see government support um, for artists in society? There are definitely some places, and I'm guessing it's internationally true. Okay. All right. So where do we see that? Okay. We definitely, definitely see it, okay? And I'm sure that you'll be able to think of some. Andre, um, looks like you're curious about something. I'm not sure what you're curious about. I don't see your question in the chat. It looks like you're kind of pondering on something. Do you want to express what that is, what you're, what you're kind of pondering on or what you're curious about? Okay, while I wait for some... Uh, Okay, so Nick Hill says, we see government support for museums and exhibitions. We sure do, Nick Hill. I agree. That's one that comes to my mind. So um, the National Museum of uh, British Columbia, or um, uh, actually it's uh, the British Columbia Provincial Museum here. Uh, no, it's the National, National Museum. Um, June says, government helps painters to hold impressive art exhibition uh, festivals in the Vancouver Art Gallery. That's right. Yeah, the Vancouver Art, Art Gallery, June, uh, is uh, strongly supported by uh, government funds. Absolutely. So that's one. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, artists who display their works in these galleries and museums definitely uh, make some money for sure. Okay. There are some other places as well, I'm sure. Okay. Where we can... Uh, think about it. So art galleries and museums are kind of um, places where the government is supporting artists who have uh, reached a certain level in their talent. Think about the other end of that spectrum as well, where artists get support. Aspiring artists or artists that are maybe not yet famous. Barhat says, artists are a part of society. It can be possible to pay them for their hard work directly through government revenue. Taxpayers can enroll to help them. Okay, Jyoti says, public places like temples, museums. Um, sure. 
Okay, uh, Andre, very good in school. Yeah, so schools, art schools also get government funding. So uh, universities that have art programs um, around the world get government funding as well, definitely. Okay, so that's going to be um, my example. So, um, <clears throat> as in many parts of the world um, the government of British Columbia and Canada let's make it simple uh, supports um, aspiring artists early in their careers by um, giving funding to art schools such as Emily Carr in Vancouver uh, as well as providing support for developed artists such as uh, funding the Vancouver Art Gallery. So if you think of um, like a big university or school uh, that has an art program in your locality and you think of a museum, Boom, you've thought of two uh, great examples of where government funds are used uh, to help support artists who want to pursue a career in music, in painting, and so on. And um, definitely as June, June is uh, over in um, Van or in Alberta, but uh, and we could talk about the uh, Calgary School of Ballet, I believe, for dancers. It's very famous. Um, these uh, these organizations, these art entities, they get lots of government funding. So, and I'm sure in India and in other uh, parts of the world, uh, you have that as well. So I'm sure there are, for instance. Uh, school of dance and music in India that get government funding, right? I'm, I'm, I, I really hope so anyway. Okay, so as in many uh, parts of the world, the government of Canada supports aspiring artists early in their careers by giving funding to art schools. Uh, art schools should be small a, small s, as it's just a common noun. Um, art schools such as Emily Carr in Vancouver. It's a very famous uh, art school. Um, as well as providing support for developed artists, um, such as funding the uh, Vancouver Art Gallery. Okay, very clear, real world, very impactful example to drive home this point of uh, building culture, okay? And we can add that, right? So in aims of um, preserving and building uh, culture, okay? And now I don't even really need, so at this point I would feel that I don't need a connecting, concluding sentence because this part here would actually be my um, concluding, connecting sentence in aims of preserving and building culture, all right? But if I really want to, I can add one more sentence. Um, and I could say, um, uh, this is uh, half of, um, this is a part of the reality, or this is a part of the truth, um, and uh, individuals are also benefiting. I probably wouldn't add that at this point. I would just start into my body paragraph Two, okay, would have better flow, all right? All right, Janiel writes, I have recently read an article in Times Canada that every month the Liberal Party supports each artist by a $1,000 paycheck to fulfill their survival needs so that Canada has a lot of artists in various fields such as painters, dancers, and musicians. 
Um, yeah, Janiel, I don't think that's quite true, but the truth isn't important in IELTS. So as long as you come up with a good example, fine, that makes sense. And I like how you use that direct first person uh, example. Okay. So, all right. Okay, good. So here we have our body paragraph. Now I want to review this before I continue on to my body paragraph too. So in the actual IELTS, ideally what you're doing is after you finish a body paragraph, you review it, you make revisions as needed. So check for spelling, grammar, information mistakes. Okay. So most societies define their culture through their music, dance, paintings, and literature which are created by artists through the centuries and therefore it is the responsibility of society to give support for such creativity since it is difficult for artists to make money directly through their efforts taxpayers should dedicate a certain amount of government budget to make sure that artists can capture the pop culture historical events and language of their era in their visual and auditory recordings and reflections. As in many parts of the world, the Government of Canada supports aspiring artists early in their careers by giving funding to art schools such as Emily Carr in Vancouver, as well as providing support for developed artists such as funding the Vancouver Art Gallery in aims of preserving and building local culture. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm happy with that. And now what I can do is continue on with body paragraph two. And body paragraph two is going to uh, have the same structure. So topic, sentence, explanation, and example. Okay. Now I'm going to use the leading expression in addition, not furthermore. Because here I'm adding information, right? So it's like one plus one, okay? Governments should support artists one plus corporations and individuals should support artists plus one, okay? It's not more important, so it's not furthermore. It's just simply in addition, okay? Okay, so here's my topic sentence. In addition, the efforts of artists have also played a key role in the success and entertainment of individuals and organizations. <coughs> Excuse me. So they too ought to ensure the financial prosperity of musicians, painters, and the like. And the like here means dancers and other people who are artists as well. Okay, explanations. So, The works of artists are often used in shows and exhibitions that advertise company brands and help organizations
gain uh, fame and fortune uh, in their communities. Okay. Um, so here is the explanation. Um, therefore, it is only fair that these companies um, reward the contributions of artists. Okay. And, uh, of course, one very common place uh, where we can see this is, for instance, in the movie industry, right? So uh, movies generate billions of dollars, and movies are, of course, uh, in large part um, a product of artists, uh, visual uh, artists, musicians. Uh, so clearly, uh, these companies should support artists throughout their careers so that they can continue to profit. Okay. So I can clearly see this mutual uh, benefit in the movie industry where billions of dollars are generated annually for companies like uh, Paramount, uh, Warner uh, Brothers, um, and uh, Sony Pictures. Okay. Uh, by the efforts of musicians, actors, and artists. So it only makes sense that they too uh, support their art in turn. Okay? All right. Um, so <clears throat> there is my paragraph, okay? Um, Andre got talent. <clears throat> Sorry, I think Andre, you mean like uh, uh, America's Got Talent or something like talent shows? That would make sense too. So here's my paragraph. Now I want to review it. In addition, the efforts of artists have also played a key role in the success and entertainment of individuals and organizations. So they too ought to ensure the financial prosperity of musicians, painters, and the like. The works of artists are often used in shows and exhibitions that advertise company brands and help organizations gain fame and fortune in their communities. Therefore, it is only fair that these companies reward the contributions of artists. I can clearly see this mutual benefit in the mu movie industry where billions of dollars are generated annually for companies like Paramount, Warner Brothers, and Sony Pictures by the efforts of musicians, actors, and artists. Um, so it only makes sense that they too support their art in turn. Okay. Uh, and I did mean... Painters. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so that, those are my two body paragraphs. I feel confident that I have now uh, given a good argument of why governments and um, other sources uh, should support artists such as musicians and painters. And now I can conclude uh, what I am saying. Yeah, so those talent shows for sure, Andre, that would be a good example as well. Again, don't so make sure, Andre, that when you choose an example, it's uh, an example that's easy for everybody to relate to and it's easy for you to write. So if you write an example about talent shows, um, I think that's okay. But I think just generally labeling the movie industry here would be uh, maybe a little bit simpler. Okay. Uh, Rashika writes, in my country, government conducts art exhibitions annually to support artists such as musicians, 
uh, painters to help popularize their creations or their creativity. Innovations is more for scientists, Rashika. It's more for like inventions rather than art. For art, it's more creations. Um, Rashika, just instead of saying in my country, the government conducts art exhibitions, name your country. Okay, so name the country and name the art exhibition. So say, you know, in my country, whatever your country is, the government conducts the annual art exhibition of something expo. So be more specific. The more specific, the better your lexical resource mark and the better your coherence because your reader is more impacted. They're more able to visualize uh, what you're referring to. Okay. All right. So then comes the conclusion. Now the conclusion has three parts. Okay. Uh, the conclusion uh, restates your main points. Um, it emphasizes your argument and it gives a take home message for your reader. So let me write that up. I'm running out of time a little bit. So I'll write this up for you nice and smoothly so you can see the finished essay as well. And keep going. Go ahead, um, members. Keep writing. Okay. So in conclusion... Both Okay, so there is my conclusion, okay? And again, I wrote up this conclusion in just two minutes, so I would want to revise, review this, make it more concise, but here we go. Um, in conclusion, both national authorities and the private sector have a responsibility to nurture and promote artists. Nurture means to take care of and to promote artists. The clear reason for this is that both of these entities have much to gain from the expressions of musicians and painters as these artists are fundamental to their long-term success and identity. Ultimately, financial support for artists from governments and organizations is a wise investment for the prosperity of all parties involved. Okay, um, which basically means that by giving money to these artists, uh, we're helping the artists live uh, and survive and have a good quality of life. But in turn, the society and government and, of course, these organizations also have a good quality of life. Okay. All right. So uh, that's all the time I have for today. Now, 
in, a perf in the perfect world, uh, you would actually have a minute or two to read through the whole essay one more time, take out any redundancies, make sure you have a uh, good flow, okay? Um, Andre, some nice writing there at the end. Uh, this is the whole essay. I will post this on our YouTube community uh, board. And um, I encourage you to practice and keep revising, keep reviewing, go back, rewrite the same essay over and over again. Don't just keep writing uh, newer and newer essays each time. It's a really good idea to go back, revisit old essays, think about how you can make them better, how you can write them better, okay? So uh, read, review, revise, rewrite. That's a very standard practice in uh, improving your writing skills, all right? You're very, very welcome, Andre. Uh, excellent work, Rashika, Bakhrat, really nice contributions. June, thank you for uh, posting this question for everyone. I appreciate that. Um, if you have some task two questions that you're curious about members on how to write an essay for them, send them to me, okay? We can use them in the class. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out for now. Again, you can get lots more help for your IELTS writing as well as other parts of the IELTS exam. Join our premium package at aehelp.com. Um, general IELTS, gielshelp.com. I will be back in 30 minutes with listening section, listening for parts three, part four, continuation from yesterday. So hopefully I will see you back for that in half an hour. I'm Adrian signing out from Victoria for now. Bye.